Hello, my name is Pat Phillips. I was the founding president of the British Columbia Aviation Museum, which we opened in 1991. In uh, 1986, I got involved with a group of people that were trying to get a museum started on the airport at Victoria. And uh, as a result of that, we formed a new uh, organization, eventually calling it the British Columbia Aviation Museum. And we are sitting here today in the main hangar of the facility that we started to build in 1987. The building was purchased uh, in the U.S., was brought up on a truck. I believe it was $50,000. We had an Expo Legacy grant to get us started of $120,000. We purchased the building and uh, unfortunately it was the wettest year in history so we had a bit of a bog around here but we we, we got started in uh, the beginning of 1987 <clears throat> and uh, one of the first things that went awry was that there was a security change in the airports across Canada they were raised to a level one, so we had to get a gate guardian on the gate for every time that we opened the gate, so somebody had to be here for eight hours or the whole time that the building was under construction. Luckily, a uh, former Wellington pilot, Jack Ferguson, who was a vet, retired, came and asked if he could help out. He ended up standing at that gate for the whole eight months until we got this thing up. And, and it turned out that Jack had spent three years in Stalag 3 and actually worked on one of the tunnels, so that was kind of interesting. The building itself is pretty straightforward. It's an engineered structure, 100 by 150 uh, steel girder. We got it about, <clears throat> we just got started, of course, getting our foundations dug, getting that all laid up by a friend, uh, our uh, friend Jim McLaren from the Victoria Flying Club, who was also a builder, volunteered to, to build this for us. And uh, as we got our foundations ready to pour, we found out from uh, the uh, government that as a result of a collapse in a, of a building in Vancouver, I think it was the Savon Foods building collapsed, the, uh, the roof caved in. <clears throat> All the engineering requirements for buildings at that time were raised by 50% on the amount of steel, so we had to spend another 20 or 30 grand to beef up the re-rod. So this place is very, very well constructed, believe me. One of the things that happened pretty much at the beginning when we started to build it, as I said, it was 150 by 50, 150 by 100, which gives you uh, 15,000 square feet. Uh, the builder, Jim McLaren, said, we're not going to have enough room for our uh, ancillary stuff, washrooms, offices, uh, libraries, whatever we de decided to add on. So Jim, at that time, uh, constructed a complete set of annexes around the building. If you notice, we have wings on both sides of the building and of course the gift shop across the front. That's all in addition to what the actual hangar stands, where the hangar stands. And as it's turned out, we had to use the Norseman room quite a bit now for meetings and, uh, and public events. The library is, is utilized, the offices, and of course the gift shop and lobby have turned out really well. The building went up in about nine months, I guess it was pretty well to a lock-up stage. The last part of it was the doors, which were going to be really expensive. We didn't have enough money to, to actually go out and buy a commercial set of doors. So Jim McLaren actually came up with the idea of these uh, rolling on a railroad track type of thing with a, underneath. And uh, Jim came in here with a welder one day and they actually built the frames, got some of the same metal that the museum or building had on it, put it across the skin. and. Those doors are still rolling back and forth, very successful today. Pretty much uh, the building sat on gravel. We had a gravel floor in here for the first probably eight months, ten months. And then when the second draw came through for the uh, Mexpo Legacy Grant, we were able to put the floor in, which was very expensive. But as you can see today, it's in beautiful condition. We put sealers on it so that it wouldn't crack. And it's remarkable how well it stood up. And the building served us very well for I guess 10 years or so and eventually added the uh, Henderson, or pardon me, the restoration hangar which is on the left over here. That was our second building and ultimately the, the Henderson hangar was added at the front. So I think in total we're getting up around 60,000 square feet and we're actually full right now with the addition of the Lancaster. I guess we might have to build another one. So. Actually it's quite remarkable uh, just to add on that the, this total construction including the electrical, plumbing, pretty well lock up and operational. We put it up for around $220,000 and today's money that would have to be probably a couple of million. So we did very well. We had a lot of help, a lot of construction people pitched in. 
the builder pitched in with all his time. He spent two week, two years every weekend. Jim McLaren was out here with about four or five of his shovel and gravel. And uh, basically this, this whole construction job was done by about four or five people. And uh, it's remarkable when it's, when it's turned out as, as well as it has, so great.